I am going to agree with you 100%. Uh, Chris, on the other hand, still thinks that... Uh, I'm not even going to read his file names out. He, they they kind of speak for themselves. But it's fine. <laughs> yeah, apparently not a fan. And we're off. First is going to be the big key to Ganon's Tower. There it okay. is. Okay, off to a good start. And uh, both players looks like they're going to be making the same play up. North could be checking out probably the uncle and then going from there. But yeah, Ganon's Tower, big key out of the way. That's one of those really obnoxious... Uh, items to be able to just get that done with and know that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but here's the thing, depending on how the seat goes, we could still not, somehow we could still, now nah, there's probably no chance of getting a double dip G tower. That's impossible <laughs> at this point. So it's going to be, this is going to be a PB right here. It's going to be one of those hot and spicy randomizer PBs. And we got another big key to Misery Mire. Can I get all a right. third big key like right off the bat? We're having all the big keys and, uh, Considering, you know, the first item these guys are getting here is more or less the last item you usually need in the game. Yeah, the the the, the uh, several, the disguised ice rods that are in Key Sanity. Um, yeah, this is the finals, but just for those that are unaware, uh, Key Sanity is a advanced game mode, as they like to say, where all the dungeon items are randomized amongst the general item pool. So you need to be collecting all the potential Small keys, big keys. Uh, in actually, even in V twenty nine, the uh, I believe the map and compass are now are required by the logic to complete the dungeon. Um, but mm -hmm. the rest of these players are extremely skilled and know exactly what they need to finish the dungeons. So uh, it's also worth noting that compasses are slightly useful in the fact that they tell you how many items are in each dungeon and which ones you how many you've collected. While maps are even more useful than that because they tell you whether the dungeon is a crystal or pendant, and that's kind of uh, useful information that we need right off the bat. Absolutely, of course. As always, uh, with the rando, you kind of want to avoid pendant dungeons if you can, though uh, with the added keys in the item pool, it's, I would say, almost impossible in key sanity to really avoid all three pendant dungeons. Yeah, it's it's a pretty rare sight to see, especially, especially in key sanity with the amount of required items, the, how much those are increased. Um, but both players going to be heading into Kakariko. We find another G Tower, our first G Tower small key. There's a lot of items in here. It's a pretty slow slog through here, but hopefully we can find some boots to speed things up a little bit. Um, as a runner, you always like to find, like, a bottle or the flute, ocarina, whatever you want to call it, in here, just so you can immediately, like, activate it or, you know, check some of those more fetch quest things, like the sick kid. And you see here the uh, slight difference between these two guys. Christos farmed uh, three bombs uh, at the bushes of the grove. Uh, there's, I believe, two or three 50-50 bushes there that have a 50% chance of spawning a bomb for you. Uh, while Andy was fine with just one and using it down here in that little hut, farming four bombs under the pots. Yeah, fortunately for Andy, the, the item at the race game wasn't required, so his single bomb wasn't going to be used to get that. But we do find more bombs in the bottom of the well, so there is that bailout. And our first dungeon map too, Swamp Palace. So once we get into the dark, we'll be able to find out what is sitting in that Swamp Palace. Every runner's favorite dungeon, especially to do full clear. And there's the flippers too. And speaking of Swamp Palace, we've got the flippers. Of course, there's still a lot more required items we need to get into Swamp Palace, so it's not really like the logic's not telling us to go there next. Uh, <laughs> the one thing to note is there's a, this thing called Sphere 1 item locations. It's basically all the item locations in the game that have zero requirements to get to, which are all these places that Chris is going, or both players are going to right now. Uh, and at this point, something's got to give. we got to find some more items along the way, because just flippers, that's not enough. No, with only the flippers, we can really only check the hobo at the moment, I think. Yeah, Hobo and the Waterfall Cave. Uh, I mean, that's, and even the Zora Ledge item. So that's, you know, four items. But, uh, yeah, you know, true. most players would rather wait and see if they could, uh, uh, see if they could route in Zora as well. All right, but it's going to be interesting to see what else we find in Kakariko. There's actually not that much left, so. Gonna be heading up to the Lost Woods to see what two items are up there. I highly doubt either player is gonna go for the lumberjack check at this point. 
It's one of those locations that you can only get to if you have the boots and the ability to full clear Agate Tower, which, you know, no lamp, no sword, no cape or second sword, no castle tower keys. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, there's not too much stuff there. I mean, I'm exaggerating when I say there's not too much stuff left that they can check. They still have a bit to go here. But uh, it's been it's been kind of stingy so far. I mean, flippers alone, as you were saying earlier, not quite enough to really get anywhere. Yeah. We still also have all of East Palace area, uh, Hyrule Castle, and the whole South Shore section. So plenty of opportunities to find our next progression item. Andy almost <laughs> doing a double take on that heart container, but, you know, when you're sitting at five hearts, what, 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 why, why won't you go ahead and get a six one? Come on. Yeah, full heart container, I mean... You don't want to skip that. It's not that much time lost to just go over there. No, oh, and speaking of more items. Well, that glove right there is an interesting find. Now Andy has the opportunity to go back and check the the graveyard. Uh, go into the graveyard to check the back of escape. The, 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 the bomb wall with the three chests back there. He could also, if you really want to, uh, see us break up to Death Mountain now. Yeah, he could with the, with the glove. He can lift that big rock there, uh, has to make his way through the dark, but that shouldn't be a problem. The uncle cave, or the old man cave, rather. Alright, let's see what three items we've got back here. He did also pick up, I believe that was a small key to pod, so... Mm -hmm. Bomb upgrade, another big key to pod, and, ooh, a nice 300 rupees, that's good to get, that's good one to get early. Now, Pod is an interesting dungeon because it the amount of required keys for that, by the logic, is kind of a... Well, it's the highest of all of our dungeons. It's a, There's six required keys in that dungeon. And uh, most players, depending on what items they have, can do it in four. So we'll see how this one goes. Yep. Now Andy making his way down to the south shore is going to check what he can find in the dam and then in the drained area outside. And then he'll most likely make his way over to Mini Moldon Cave. Uh, has, I hope, plenty of bombs to finish it up. These mini mold arms can be quite trolly sometimes. Oh, and there's the Desert Palace small key. Yeah, I agree. The mini mold arms can, you know, you toss a bomb, you're like, all right, run into this bomb, please. And like, nah, nah I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. Can't afford to die right now. And especially without any other form of uh, firepower or weaponry, you know, you got to rely on those bombs. We actually haven't seen what the bush crabs drop, so if they drop bombs, that could be a nice refill for them. Yeah, have an easy access. Oh, well. Okay, there's a couple some, of bombs. So. Some soggy bombs work just as well. I mean, technically you shouldn't be able to light these, right? Te technically. But aren't there, there... There's some water bombs in future Zelda releases, so maybe this is just, you know... Yeah, that's fine. It's fired by. I mean, really, I'm, I in general wonder how he lights them without a fire source, but it just works. It looks like Chris... Oh, excuse me? What was that bomb? Uh, <laughs> How did that not kill him? Speaking Stupid. of weird bombs. Stupid broken game. Uh, we see Chris heading into Eastern Palace. We didn't get a chance to see... Oh, but hold on. We got a hookshot in Mini Boulder and Cave. And the cave. Oh, and the cave. Oh, gross. Oh, boy. Well, it's something worth thinking about because that cape is slightly useful at this point. Uh, they, they can't complete Castle Tower, but it's also worth mentioning that Castle Tower does have two chests with items in it. And uh, without any keys, you can still get at least the first chest. I don't know about you. Uh, oh, I think sorry, that I, man, I'd almost be tempted to take that hook shot and that glove and sequence break up to Death Mountain just to get across. There's a lot of chests up there. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's maybe not a bad play. It's just... I remember, I believe, Andy saying yesterday that he, uh, in his post-game interview, was saying he has a real issue with a sequence breaking in Key Sanity. He's never sure if he showed or not, and it can really, you know, it can already mislead you pretty heavily in a normal rando, but in Key Sanity, it can just make everything so much worse. Yeah, it's a hard call to make, because, you know, sometimes you can get an item that's, of course, out of sequence, that sends you on another path that could take you away from, like, the desired path, or, you know, you miss, like, an important key or something, you know. Especially in Key Sanity with how many more required items. 
it does seem a little bit more risky. Um, Ice Rock Cave only holding a bottle, but that is our first bottle, so that sick kid check could come into play later. And Andy gonna be making his way over to the East Palace area, gonna be checking out what Sahasral is holding, and uh, seeing what else is in Eastern. Yeah, and with uh, the 300 bucks that Andy found earlier, and by the looks of it, Chris does as well, uh, he'll be able to pay off the bottle vendor, so that's two items that he can get down there in Kakariko if he wants to. Nice little bit of information from our boy Sahasrala, dropping that Tower of Para hint. 300 rupees, shovel, and a map to Dark Palace. So, uh, there's two NPCs in the game that give you this kind of sweet information that's really useful in Key Sanity. Sahasrala tells you where the green pendant is, which today is that Tower of Para, and the guy that you usually buy the big bomb from to go check Pyramid Fairy in the Dark World tells you what the, the Pyramid Fairy crystals, five and six, the red crystals, where they're located. Mm -hmm. But for me, every single time, like I was expecting that map in Sahasrala's hut to be the Dark Palace, or to be the Tower Para map, because every time I get that information, I immediately always find the map to it. So it's like immediately useless. <laughs> All right, so now Andy making his way into Eastern Palace, as we can see from the compass that he found earlier, is currently at zero out of six potential item locations in here. That uh, includes the item that the boss drops, which he can't get to right now without a bow or a lamp, logically. Yeah, I'm sure most of our, actually most of our players at this point are pretty, pretty content with the uh, diving that uh, vanilla big key lo chest. When you go through the dark room uh, without a lamp. But yeah, going in here without... I mean, we don't have a big key anyway. No bow. We did get some bombs. That's always nice. Yeah, and he definitely hasn't been short on bombs here. I mean, uh, he farmed that little hot in Kakariko a little bit, but I feel like he's picked up a lot of these triple bomb items. So here's an interesting concept. Like, for Andy, let's say he doesn't find anything in Eastern Palace. What uh? What's his next play? Because he he got the shovel, he got the bottle. He could check those two locations, but they're kind of out of the way. They're not very convenient. However, he could go do Hyrule Castle, and maybe take a Death Warp and then go up and check that first chest in Agatower. Of course, you'd rather go do Agatower when you have at least one key, so you could check the first or both the chests in uh, Agatower, but. So some of the intricacies of routing in randomizer, it's like, how do I be the most efficient? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of decision making to be made here. Yeah, there's a, there's a pot up the top right corner with a small key in it that you need to get, and then just gotta get out of here. Andy using the hookshot to kind of get around. You can hookshot all the pots in that room. Uh, that hookshot is actually a pretty nice use of a weapon, or just, you know, a way to get enemies out of the way until you find an actual sword. Yeah, hookshot is a nice find. It gives you, as you say, a bunch of movement options, and you can stun enemies. It's not good enough to kill anything, but at least they get out of your way, and uh, once an enemy is stunned, you can just walk through them without being hurt, too, so that's really convenient. Only finding a small key to Misery Mire, which, of course... One of the small keys that are generally not very useful, because Meyer tends to have enough keys to get through it within the dungeon itself, from, like, uh, enemy drops or pots. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, Eastern Palace not really the answer, and we... Both players kind of go in the same route now. I'm going to be seeing what's up at Hobo. Chris going to stop by and pick up some more bombs along the way as well. Well, that's an interesting decision. Oh, well, I guess he has enough bomb upgrades under his belt that it actually makes sense. I, I figured six bombs should be enough, but if he can carry all 16 by 10 more, it never hurts. I'm curious if that's going to be leading up to maybe a Kyle Castle play or something. So, and generally you need at least, you need only five bombs to get two Zelda cell, if you're good. But hookshot plus bombs makes it, makes getting through a Kyle Castle pretty easy. Easier. Yeah. And you're going to be heading into the Zora's Domain. There's two more chests coming up. 
plus Zora's item plus whatever's on Zora's ed, uh, ledge. And uh, at this point, I'm kind of anticipating finding a lamp or something to get us up to Death Mountain. Lamp or flute, maybe? Mm-hmm. Maybe a hammer? Small key to T-Rock and another map to mm. Hyrule Castle. <laughs> okay. One of the worst ones. All right, we're going to have to see what Zora has for us. I'm anticipating life lessons, but the Zora ledge item is useful. That's pretty useful. That's that a, that's very a, useful. That's a mood pearl right there. All right, cool. Progress. So Finally. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely still thinking hammer. Maybe on Zora? I mean, that would be too good, so probably not, but... At this point, I could easily put something in Hyrule Castle now. Oh, Andy mm -hmm, getting bopped true. by these Zora fireballs. It's a good thing he wasn't, like, fake flipping at all and get a sweet soft lock. Oh, and some more bombs. And Chris Yay. Not far behind, so both players are going to be grabbing that Moon Pearl around the same time. But yeah, here's the thing. You have the Moon Pearl, but you still don't really have access to the Dark World yet. You either need to find another glove or you need to find the hammer. Hammer would be yep. nice, because then that would be their first, like, actual weapon. <laughs> like, a real weapon. But, uh... Yeah. Mitts are also nice because of just routing options that open up. I mean, just the yeah. Moon Pearl alone is kind of... You know, it's good to have it, obviously, and a very nice progression item, but it's a little bit of a bummer, I guess. A little bit. Looks like Andy's going to be checking that shovel spot. He might actually walk all the way up and check what the sick kid is holding as well in this route. Let's see what we got. Will the shovel be useful or no? That's pretty useful. Ooh, <laughs> hello. Well, what we'll a take that. That's actually really perfect for routing, because now he can just go right up, check sick kid, and then go right in the village of Outcast. But we, at right around, right, right below 17 minutes, have our Dark World access. But no sword yet, which is... I love that. It's great. Yeah, and I'm very happy for Andy that uh, he found the Titan Smiths and, uh, you know, a lamp, say, or a mm -hmm. sword. Oh, yeah. All right. Apparently, Chris hasn't done Mini Moldron Cave, which makes sense why he went and bought some more bombs just to make sure he had enough to clear that room. And yep, he's picking up his hook shot and his cape now. And a big key from Sick Kid to Ice Palace. How did he get that? Where did he get that? Well, Who does I mean, he know? It makes sense that he gets sick after he's in Ice Palace, right? It's cold in there. That is true. Another pod dark, uh, another pod small key, not a dark key. Uh, seems like that is the second small key that Chris has also picked up while his stream was having a little problem there. That makes sense. Explains why his rupee count is now leveled out with Andy's as well. Mm-hmm. All right, Andy gonna be, is this the, this might be a lumberjack cave up to Death Mountain or just straight to Death Mountain. Okay. He's going with the sequence break. He's yeah, I mean. He's... I, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Maybe he's anticipating like Lamp is gonna be right in the beginning of Thieves Town or something. I mean, it's also point... it, it's also kind of nice because if you go up to Death Mountain, you find like the lamp, um, then all of a sudden it gives you plenty of information about how the siege is like wanting to play out. Like, all right, well, I have the lamp, so that means I have to find the flute somewhere outside of Death Mountain or something like that. Yeah, very true. This could also, as Chad is pointing out, be a little bit uh, without trying to spoil you here, but. Uh... A little bit of a thing that's still in Andy's mind from yesterday. He he didn't go up Death Mountain for a very, very long time, and that made him out uh, miss out on the Titan Smiths. And that really, oh. really hurt him. Gotcha. Well, I'm excited to see what we find up here. We're only going to be able to get the one item in Spectacle Rock, but eyes on the what's on top. Oh, a dungeon map. Might be getting that later. And, of course, he does have the hookshot, so he can go to East Death Mountain and... Uh, Hit up good old Paradox Cave, Spiral Cave, and see what's on the floating island. Yep. 
Chris is now grabbing his Ice Palace big key from the sick kid. I'm curious to see what he's going to do with. If he's going to head up to Death Mountain as well, or if he decides, nope, it's Dark World time. I kind of anticipate a Dark World visit. Oh, nice. Selling the bee. Ooh, Grab very that good. sweet money. 300 rupees right there. All right, well, we're going to be seeing some route divergence. Let's see which one of these plays pays off for our runners. I think it's a good idea to get Paradox Cave out of the way. Andy, a little off the mark <laughs> with that bomb. Losing a couple seconds there. Piece of heart. Another big key. The T-Rock. All right. All right. Well, we're a little far away from going to T-Rock for now, but it's nice to get that one out of the way. But that's one of those locations that I doubt anyone's going to end up missing. We still, of course, don't know if T-Rock is even going to be required in this scene. Yeah, hopefully, we don't really have any idea yet. Hopefully we'll see some map checks along the way. There is Ether and the Silver Arrows. That is a nice find. Yeah, not immediately helpful, but very nice to have those early on. Oh, and Chris those finds the more important part of those Silver Arrows, the bow. Silver's into bow, nice. Well, that bow... Oh, the Fire Rod, wow! Oh, man. Looks like the sequence break for Andy might not be paying off. Well, let's see. He could still find something useful. I mean, more useful. The stuff he found was pretty useful. We don't know yeah, yet if no the Ada Medallion is required, but uh, we, we know Silver's generally isn't, but it's still nice to have. What else do we got in Peace Town? There's the Quake Medallion, so there's two medallions out of the way. Yep, only one missing medallion. That's always a nice feeling to know. That, uh... Sword. Oh man, oh my TT gosh. is stacked. I mean, it kind of had to be. There was so little stuff in the Light World, like Thieves Town, just had to be. And only a heart piece in Spiral Cave, so. But we are going to be heading into Super Bunny Cave as well as Hookshot Cave, so there's still a little bit more to be discovered in Dev Mountain for Andy. Yeah, thankfully Andy still has a couple of spots left to check here with that hookshot and that moon pearl that he found. So, uh, yeah, it's not a complete bust yet, and as you were mentioning, the silver arrows are very nice. It's also worth noting that all this Death Mountain stuff, both generally both players will probably check them, so, you know. It might be time loss if, like, it's a bust, but at the same time, once the other player goes back and does it, then all of a sudden it's back to even. Yeah, absolutely. There's a minuscule chance that Crystals will not check these locations. These are so commonly checked there, it's just a matter of time, really. Oh, surprised Andy didn't pick up that magic refill there. Not that he really needs magic right now, it's just nice to be at full whenever you can. Chris is going to be heading over to the digging game. Plenty of rupees to play this mini game, and then I'm curious if he's going to grab the frog on his trip down. Oh, we do have a map check, Swamp Palace, and Pod, both crystals. Mm -hmm. so that kind of tells us what other required items we're going to be needing in order to finish out this seed. Just an arrow upgrade here at the digging game as Andy picks up a second bottle from the Hookshot Cave. Let's see if we can find anything else. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, unfortunately. Well, a little excited there. You know, that, that fairy in a bottle is kind of frustrating, though. Oh, there's another sword! All right, never mind. We're good. So, okay, well, that's good. At least we got something out of this whole trip. Mm -hmm. um, silvers and a sword. The thing is, the, what I was trying to say is if Andy, uh, when Andy decides to pop into Thieves Town, he's going to have to remember that he has that fairy. Because most players will take that... Uh, intentional death warp to get out of the dungeon. But of course, if you have fairy, you can't really take that intentional death warp without doing it again. Yeah, that can be quite annoying. Maybe if he remembers it, he can release it? I don't know. Well, we'll see. Chris gonna find out what the Pyramid Fairy Crystals are. We got Turtle Rock and Desert Palace. Alright. Some more information. A lot a of like... Rock. A lot of lengthy dungeons that are required in this game. Swamp, Pod, T-Rock. Yeah, we don't get to skip a whole lot. But Terror Rock, definitely required. 
So the big key will come into play, though, as you were saying earlier, uh, only a matter of time until Christos goes up to Death Mountain. And that, uh, there's the key. Oh, there's the Desert Palace big key, so there's one more required big key required, so that's good. Yep. Uh, in that same interview yesterday, while they were talking about sequence breaking, Christos was saying that in Key Sanity, he usually sequence breaks dungeons, but he does not sequence break the overworld. So uh, we'll have to see if that comes into play here. He decided not to sequence break Death Mountain yet. He might go there now. Mm -hmm. That's looking like that's what he's planning on doing. So these guys are going to be evening up pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, Master Sword and Silvers already is going to be pretty nice. 30 Definitely. minutes in. Now I just got to hope that for our entertainment that the other two swords are locked deep in G-Tower or something. Because <laughs> there are some bosses that uh, Silver Arrows don't really do anything to. Them, so... So the question is, now that, since Andy, hmm, actually, yeah, Chris went south down to Hype Cave, I wonder if Andy's going to go up and do Skull Woods. Chris also did get the map to Skull Woods, so knows what, well, he he's capable of knowing what it could be. I don't think he checked the map when he got, when he, after he got that map, because he saved and quit out, so we don't know if that's think, a crystal or not. I think Andy forgot that he does not have the big here. <laughs> and now he probably forgot that he and... has a Oh, man. <laughs> Here comes the fairy! Oh, uh, that's incredible. <laughs> oh man, that's so many unfortunate things all at once. I mean, thankfully for him, you know, still a green male, it's even worse if you have like red male, and you uh -huh. do that intentional death and it takes forever. Green male though, it's still pretty quick. Yeah, it wasn't a ton of time lost, it was just, oh man. It's pretty funny. For him there. Man, I can't believe I saw that happen in a championship match. Who would have thought? How did these guys get <laughs> to the finals in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. These guys are pretty good, I guess. It looks like Andy's going to be making this trip south. Yeah, I yep. like that. Uh, the use of the hook shot to com continuously knock that dead rock back. Yeah, that was uh, really good. It's good because a lot of times you'll hit them once and then they'll just freeze, obviously, and then they're in the way. Uh, it's cool that you can do that with the hookshot and sword beams as well. Maybe the boomerang, but the boomerang is pretty slow. Oh, a little bit more information. Ice Palace, another crystal. With uh, the big key from the sick kid, so... Mm -hmm. And aside from small keys... Oh, we still need the hammer. Okay. But aside from hammer, Ice Palace is fairly open at this point. Yeah, that's true. The fire on now. And we're going to be getting his arrow capacity upgrade. Chris going to be finishing up the rest of Light World Death Mountain. Going to be heading in the Dark World. Now, he didn't get anything... Yeah, there's nothing... Because you know how, like, if he had gone into Thieves Town, he found something that would make allow him to clear more stuff on Death Mountain? Mm -hmm. And vice versa for Andy, I don't I don't think they really found anything that would have made clearing the other thing faster or more efficiently. That looks like Andy's gonna go grab the frog. Okay, yeah, I like this. Um usually you you'd like to wait until you have the mirror, but since both the frog and the purple chest can have the mirror, it's not always such a great idea. Yeah, that's the worst situation when you put it off forever and then it ends up being the mirror and you're like, why, game? <laughs> why did they change this? Change it back. <laughs> Yesterday, he had my hammer, so... Oh, I, like, I like this idea. Um, and, who knows, maybe... Uh, uh, this also tells us that he's planning on going back to Kakariko, so he's probably already planning to go do Skull Woods after this. So it makes sense to go ahead and pick it up now. Yeah, I'm actually a little surprised that uh, Christos decided to not do Skull Woods after he was done with Thieves Town, but uh, I'm, I'm sure it's on his mind. I wonder, though. He does have the flippers, so he technically could swim around to go to Pyramid if he wanted to. Hmm. 
But if you're going to do that, then it's like, oh, you might as well go to Catfish too, and blah, blah, blah. And then it just kind of stacks up on itself. Yeah, and you start checking a lot of, you know, single overworld locations, which is usually not such a great idea. I'm assuming Amy is still going to go check from the bomb hut to find out what his Pyramid Fairy Crystals are. Of course, I say his Pyramid Fairy Crystals, it's the same for both seeds. But uh, he doesn't know what they are at this moment. Yep, the yeah. frog is meeting a lot of new people today. <laughs> it's making a lot of friends. So we're still unsure of Eastern and Thieves Town. Okay, Skullwoods is a pendant. So that leaves Eastern, Thieves Town, and Mire is going to be our last pendant and two crystals. So, of course, in Randomizer, you know, there's not always a difference between pendant and crystals. Sometimes you have to do all of them anyway. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. It's still good to get that info. I wonder if Chris uh, checked this map and saw that Skullwoods was a pendant, and that's why he didn't do it. I I think he saved and quit immediately out of Hype Cave, if I recall mm. correctly. But if he's heading to Village of Outcast right now, he might be going straight into Skullwoods. All right, let's see if this blacksmith is uh, our next answer. That would be huge for Andy. Yeah, if this is a regression item, uh, Andy is is in a good spot here. I don't think this is on Chris's mind necessarily right now. What do we got? What do we got? It's a small key, which could be good. Eh, pod small key's not bad. They do have the bow. And I think with the bow and those small keys, they could still... Oh, they could still... Uh, they could still check a ton of items in uh, House of Darkness. And it's uh, not completely unheard of that there's, like, vanilla keys in, in dungeons as well. Especially with Pod having six. Mm hmm. Well, we are getting that Skullwoods play, probably from both these players. Let's see what items we can find in here. It looks like they're both having the same idea. We're finding a small key to Misery Mire. Not the greatest find. Yeah, if, if we could stop finding Misery Mire keys, that'd be great. It's a big 20. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of uh, stuff left to do. We still have all of Pal or a good chunk of Palace of Darkness. We still haven't seen Hyrule Castle. Oh, there's the Tempered Sword. So <laughs> Tempered Sword oh, and Silver is all ready for these runners. Yeah, barely half an hour in and we're getting all the attack upgrades. We're still in green mail, which is not really a big problem for these guys, obviously, but uh, already on Tempered and Silvers. Yeah, we're still only on our first row of hearts as well. I skipped over room by Chris. Oop, letting go of the statue a little. Sometimes, like, the pull animation is a little wonky, especially on levers. Sometimes you'll grab the lever, but if you're too quick, you'll just let go of it and walk away. Yeah. Oh, and another Meyer key. Come on. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I mean, by the logic, you need all the Meyer keys for the most or at least some set of Meyer keys because there are plenty of them in there so I, I don't know key logic is silly yeah it sure is I only listen to item logic but <laughs> it's, it's see how far that's gotten me alright so two more chests coming up one from our good boy Mothula the problem is getting this one chest down here is kind of annoying when you don't have the mirror Chris opting to go ahead and skip it. For now, he'll probably go back in after the fight, check it, save and quit out. Ooh, ooh gotta be careful. Don't want to get a pile of mummies on top of you. And he's going to go ahead and grab this. He's probably going to do an uh, intentional death to get his health... That actually, eh, he is going to do an intentional death. I don't know how many hearts it's going to put him at, but. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. You don't want to walk back all the way there. Yeah, just a bomb capacity upgrade. Ooh, Chris down to two hearts. He's got to be careful. He does still have his fairy, so he should be fine regardless. Mafia giving him good patterns. He doesn't even need that fairy anyway. 
Looking at beautifully done. Just a small key to Ganon's Tower. So Skull Woods, other than that Tempered Sword, we haven't seen what's in the big chest, but other than that Tempered Sword, this dungeon's been uh, kind of a bust. Especially when you already have the G-Tower big key, the likelihood of needing more keys in G-Tower. I mean, you need one. Actually, no, you don't. Because there's that one pot key, like, right at the beginning. Yeah, technically you don't even need one. Let's take a minute, just kind of look at our crystals and kind of decide what do what items are still required. We don't know if Meyer is a pendant or crystal or not, so we don't know if we need the flute. But we of course still need the ice rod and cane of Samaria for T Rock. Um, we need the mirror for Swamp Palace, and we of course need that hammer. That hammer is still MIA, and that's probably one of the most important items in the game. I'm really wondering where that hammer could be. I was calling it way earlier and it still hasn't shown up, so I was obviously wrong. You know, it's probably going to be sitting in Palace of Darkness somewhere. Looks like Andy's on his way back to go check Bumper Cave. And Chris going to be our first player heading into Hyrule Castle on his way to Zelda Cell. Let's see what we find in here. Another map. Two Turtle Rock. Useless. Wonderful. Well, they did have that cape for a while that was in a mini Moldorn cave, so... And that's just a piece of heart, man. Looks like Andy's gonna be walking over... ...harder uh, item checks to route in to a normal route. It's always like, you gotta go really far out of the way, or you get early Dark World access and early Amir, and you haven't been to Zora yet, so you can do Catfish into Zora. Mm-hmm. But this is actually our first time over into this section of the Dark World, so... And who knows, that pod play might be the right one. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's already at three keys. We found those slivers really, really early. Uh, this this might not be a bad decision. Let's see if Chris can pull anything out of Zelda Cell here. Just a heart. <laughs> Finding a heart container in Zelda Cell, so he's gonna have to... Put forth a little bit of extra effort to take that intentional death, remembering that he had that fairy in the bottle, so dropping that. And uh, no lamp yet, but we still we will be seeing a sequence break to check the sewer chest. Catfish is holding a compass. <laughs> I like how Andy started walking away already, like he knew it was going to be garbage. Yeah, he's not having any of that. That's kind of that's kind of nice of having. I have the fire rod makes a uh, routing through sewer chest, sewers a little bit easier. Though I've never seen anyone ever light that torch <laughs> that Chris checked. Usually you could just hold upright and you're fine. I'm a little bit surprised. Castle Tower. Will this be our progression? It's just a bomb capacity upgrade. All right. 
No oh, man. That's, that's probably crazy. that's frustrating. Yeah, probably one of the worst things that you can find in there. Yeah. Well, Chris now probably feel it a little bit a little bit behind with uh, that not amounting to anything and Hyrule Castle is kinda of one of those places, unlike Death Mountain, that you could oftentimes get away with not even checking, like throughout the entire run. Sometimes yeah. if it if it works out conveniently and I have like the mirror, I'll try and route Hyrule Castle in with doing Pyramid Fairy or something like that. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. I mean, uh, in the later rounds of this tournament, I've seen more and more people check it. But I remember in the beginning, a lot of people just completely skipped out on on Castle Tower because when you when you're coming from, I want to say, you know, normal rando play, that's just a location you don't really ever have in your mind. Having two chests that could potentially have something mm -hmm. that might be helpful to you. And that's the thing is that second chest in there might still be required. It looks like Chris is going to be going to save the blacksmith, which uh, we know only housed, what was it, a pod key, I think? Mm hmm. So, not a bad idea. But at this point, it, it's either pod or like right at the beginning of Ice Palace or something. There's not much you can do in Ice Palace without the hammer. Yeah, what do you can do in pod? I wouldn't be surprised at all to see uh, Christos grab that third pot key from the blacksmith and then go, okay, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm heading to pot as well. Might as well. All right, what we got coming up in these next two chests? Nice bomb throw. Small key to Turtle Rock. Good to get those out of the way. I think that should be number two, right? And a big key to Hera. Okay. We still don't have access to Hera yet. And Hera also being a green pendant dungeon. But uh, there are a couple items along the way up there. And he's taking the intentional death to get back to the beginning of the dungeon. He doesn't have the hammer, so he can't continue. And he doesn't have the mirror to get him back to the beginning without it. So. All right, can check a couple more things here. Looks like Chris might be... He, might, he may do Purple Chest, which we haven't seen yet. It's kind of out of the way, but... You know, same as same with checking Catfish and whatnot. Sometimes these out-of-the-way chests are the answer. Yeah, if you've exhausted most of the things that you can check, you, you really have no other choice. I mean, obviously there's plenty left to check, but what is the most, you know, convenient and efficient place to check right now? Hmm. Well, now I'm kind of curious where that lamp is at this point. <laughs> if we do find something in, of course, I believe it's, uh, it's like five pod keys logically required to check like the dark maze and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be seeing a hammer jump here for Mandy just so we can check these two chests in here without having to uh, spend his extra key. This is partially why I said these runners can do this without getting every single key. They only need a four out of the six. And <laughs> mapped it, Tower Bearer, how useful. Oh, man. Ooh, and he's got to be a little careful. Be unfortunate to die here before actually checking the chest. We got the small key to Swamp. All right, that's very important. That is a very important key, yeah. Oh, and Chris has to be careful, too. Both of our players sitting at two hearts. Yeah. And, uh, oh, well, there's a piece of art. Unfortunately, not enough for a refill, but that's fine. You might have a lot of firepower, but if you don't have enough defense, you know, your your health can whittle away pretty quickly. Right, well, Andy's only got two more chests he can possibly check in here. And then we'll see where he heads to next. We still don't really have our answer where to go next. And it looks like Chris is going to be following not too far behind Andy, going to be doing catfish and then probably heading down to check Pyramid Pod. Jeez. Another arrow upgrade, man. What gives? Where is everything? 
All right, this has to be like flute or something, or the boots. All right. The boots, okay, that's okay. fair. Well, that only opens up two spots. It was a heart container on the library. Um, that actually opens up a few spots for Andy as well, a few extra spots. But he's already done Hookshot King, and he's already he already did the right side of Pod. Uh, I'm just gonna go check King's Tomb and head over check the Bonk Rocks. And all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden. We haven't actually checked Lumberjack yet, so... <laughs> More arrows. Damn arrows. <laughs> yeah, I suppose Lumberjack could be an interesting check now. I mean, uh, in Key Sanity, you can probably wait until we find both Castle Tower keys, but since he's already, you know, in the vicinity, I guess. Yeah, you need both Castle Tower keys. At this point, we need the second Castle Tower key and the lamp. Mm -hmm. I am surprised we still haven't seen the lamp, but this could be the lamp right here. Or the mirror. Okay. All right, the mirror. There we go. We're starting to open up a little bit. Man, all right. So that unlocks a couple overworld locations, including Graveyard Ledge, Circle of Bushes, or South of Grove, however you want to call it. Um, that also gets Andy up to Hyrule Ca or Tower of Hera. But, uh, yeah, finally. It's looking, looking like the Hyrule Castle play, which is going to be good for Chris. It's going to allow him to save a little bit of time. Uh, Fortunately, though, Andy going to be doing this with the boots. going to allow him to get through it a little bit quicker. So it's not going to be much time Chris is going to be able to save here. Yeah, unfortunately for him, um, I'm curious to see in which order he decides to check all the chests in here because he could potentially find the boots a lot earlier than Andy did. Yeah, that's true. It all depends on which order you go in. And I mean, by a lot, I mean like a minute or so. <laughs> It's interesting getting the mirror, but opting to go do this instead of... I mean, mirror is nice because it allows him to mirror out, so he doesn't have to, like, death warp anymore. Mm-hmm. But since this is one of those locations, the Spear 1 location that you can get to at the beginning of the game, like, you don't want to put it off too long, because if it happens to be one of your required items, and the other player went to it, like, right at the beginning of the game, then you're kind of... <laughs> you know, that's hard to come back from. Yeah, very true. I'm sure Andy's feeling really good about his boots right now. Oh, and Chris is going to be getting his boots right now, too, so oh, it's going to let him wow. uh, pass through this dungeon a little bit quicker. Yeah, so Chris getting his boots here on the second location that he checks. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. As you were saying, Andy doing the first part of escape here with the boots now compared to what Christos had to do earlier, but on the other hand, Christos now able to finish up what he can check and pot with the boots in hand, or on the feet, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Man, now I'm kind of anticipating we'll probably find flute at some point pretty soon um, as a means to get into Desert Palace now that we have the lamp because we also have both the Desert Palace big key and the small key to be able to full clear that entire dungeon. Mm -hmm. So Flute and Tower of Hera would be a good place for it. Uh, still surprised, though, there was nothing, other than that Swamp Palace small key, there was nothing really in the dark rooms in uh, Palace of Darkness. No, that uh, that small key is, is a very important find, but that was really the biggest thing as far as I remember. I mean, now that Andy has a mirror, of course, that small key gets even more important or attractive. Since he can now actually get into Swamp if he wants to. He has the hookshot, he has the flippers, he has everything he needs. Could you imagine if the hammer was like in the first chest of Swamp? Have we seen <laughs> oh, that man. yet in this journey? I don't think we have. I don't think so. The dream. I can see, I can see Hammer and Hera as well. All right, well, that's going to be Agatar for Andy and Hyrule Castle. So, still no Castle Tower item, but this looks like the Hera play, which I like. There's a lot of stuff you can get up here, and who knows? That last map up here could be the Eastern Palace, Misery Mire, or Thieves Town map, which would be just a little bit more information that these players are going to want. Mm hmm. I also generally like the idea of finishing up light world dungeons if you can first because they're usually a bit shorter and quicker to get through 
Oh yeah, definitely. Interesting, Chris decided to use his third small key to check that uh, the harmless hallway. I hate that name. <laughs> uh, to check that chest as opposed to the vanilla big key chest location. So, fortunately for both players, neither had anything of value, but uh, Andy finding a big key too. Peace Town. Right off the bat. Now, though, well, they're still missing the Thieves Town small key, so you don't really have to even worry about that big chest anyway. Well, another important thing to keep in mind here uh, anything Andy finds is technically still out of sequence. We're still technically not supposed to be up here on Death Mountain. Oh, yeah, right. We don't have the lamp. Hmm. Okay. So that big key is pretty nice, but, you know, whatever he finds there, it might mislead him. I think it's fine for now, obviously, but we'll have to see. So lamp could be... Like, graveyard? Could be circle of bushes? <laughs> it could be an eastern... Or uh, an ice palace? Mm -hmm. Could be in the beginning of swamp? Of course, when you already have the fire rod, skipping out on, or, you know, doing the lamp sequence breaks are probably relatively safe at this point. Yeah, I would say so. And Chris now going to go get his mirror. Let's see if he follows right behind Andy and goes right up to Death Mountain as well. Uh, nice thing about having Tempered Sword, it's just a slash and a spin to take down that pesky Moldorm. Yeah, no problem for Andy here at all. Gets a couple of bombs. <laughs> and the green pendant, which is at least another item from Sahasra. And, uh, you know, he's been holding out on us sometimes. Oh man, Chris going for the same play as well. I'm really surprised neither of these two have decided to make Swamp their first play. I know nobody likes full clearing Swamp, but, you know. Herfy, how do you full clear Swamp without a hammer? My gosh. Oh, oh man. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good point. Unless Hammer's in there, which is a good play, Herfy. I like it. It's well, obviously we did... going to be in there. <laughs> we did see, uh, real quick, that the... Misery Meyer was a crystal leaving Eastern or Thieves Town as our last pendant. So we're kind of winding down, but here's the scary thing. If if Thieves Town ends up being the last pendant, that's a pedestal, baby. Right there. It's a scary thought. Mm hmm All right, let's see what Andy, if he, I'm assuming he's going to go for the Thieves Town play right now. But then, yeah. from here, where where do you go? You grab Purple Chest, you go down to Circle of Bushes, Purple Chest. I'm sure he's hoping you'll find the hammer by then. Yeah, I mean, that's really the one thing, or the big thing, that's keeping them from going anywhere, I'd say. Even in Thieves Town here, I mean, he can finish it up, everything's not so nice and fine, but there's that pesky big chest. Maybe the Thieves Town small key will be in that pesky big chest. We can only hope. Let's see if Andy can get that sweet god pixel up here. Yep, that looks good! Can. Oh, Ooh. but the stupid enemy RNG. Oh, Good effort, though. This dungeon is still pretty scary when you're really on green tunic. Absolutely, and the scariest enemies are just coming up for Andy right now. These stupid grasshoppers, crickets, whatever you want to call them. Chris almost getting dunked on by Moldorm right off the edge. So it's, <laughs> it's getting a little dicey there. But he's going to be grabbing his bombs and his green pendant. And, of course, we still haven't seen what Sahasra is holding on to for us. Small key to G-Tower. Imagine if that was the thief sound, small key. Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't matter, though. They don't have the hammer. But hammer's going to be in here, right? Right, Herpy? It's going to be in Swamp, man. It's, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, where's Chris going? Is he going over to uh, to check it's out like the green pendant immediately? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh man, imagine if that's a hammer. I mean, this is still a sequence break because of getting up to Hera. Oh yeah, of course. I was talking so, about that just earlier. If it ends up being hammer, it's gonna be it's gonna make things interesting. There's another small key to pod, and it's just a big twenty. So that puts us at four pod keys, which at this point is enough for Andy to clear the dungeon once he finds the hammer. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, looks, clear look. minus that one chest at the back that he skipped. So he's gonna yeah. need one more. See I'm gonna point. assume uh, that Chris Oz is on his way into Thief's Town as well right now. Very clean blind fight so far from Andy. Easy peasy. What do we got? The Ice Rod! Oh, man. All right. And now... our last pendant! There it <laughs> is. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well. Is this going to be... Run? Is this going to be a blind pedestal pull? Purple chest to ped pull? Purple chest, ped pull, save quit? Ped pull, ped purple chest? Ped pull, purple chest... I need more words with P. <laughs> but that ice trot is a very nice find, especially from a pendant boss. It's of course one of the items that we're going to need to finish the game because of Turtle Rock uh, being required crystal. And uh, Chris finding the blue male, the banana hat, up in the graveyard ledge. It's a nice find. Yep, get your bananas out. Yeah, I'm not really... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not really concerned I about <laughs> either player's dying unintentionally. But let's see what's on that pedestal. Come on! Boomerang. Ten arrows! Oh, awesome. of course. Of course it's gonna be arrows. <laughs> okay. So... Mafia didn't have anything. So the only required pendant boss was just blind for that ice rod. Everything else was just a, a bait. Y'all got baited. Yep, just baited. Just baited, you could say. Well, it looks like Chris is going for purple chess. He is just focusing on overall locations. He is not interested in going back into Thieves. Uh, the only thing we really found in Thieves, other than that required ice rod, was, of course, that pod small key, which we're going to need for later. So mm -hmm. Chris will have to go eventually back in there, but maybe he's hoping he finds the hammer first. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Chris doesn't want to go in there three times. He'd rather, you know, go in there with a hammer and then finish it all up in one go. Of course, he'd also still need to find the small key for Thieves Town as well. So, but you know, I mean, that's fine. This, of all the times to put off Thieves Town, this is, this is a good time to do it. But we're kind of running out of stuff. Where is that hammer? Is it going to be Purple Chest? Um, trying to think what else we have left that they haven't checked yet. I guess there's a Gina's cave. True. I guess, oh yeah, yeah, they could check that immediately after turning in purple chest. That'd probably be the best time to check that. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you imagine if Hammer was there the whole time? Oh man. Oh yeah, That's, and of course uh, there's ice panels as well. Mm -hmm. That, uh, at Gina's cave is one of those locations that players often will put off till very late. And a small key too. Ah, all right. Well, that's that's five. Well, four for Chris, but we'll be five for Andy, and we'll be enough for him to finish that dungeon once he finds that hammer. But this looked like an ice palace play for Chris, unless he hasn't been to Ice Rock Cave yet. And, oh, he has, because that's where he got his first bottle. All mm -hmm. right. Hammerless oh, ice palace. Sees that there's only a couple of wands here on the desert ledge. Let's see if Aginus Cave actually has something. If this has the hammer, man. Ooh, I liked that dash, though. I hadn't seen that one before. Right by that cactus. Cactus dash. Is that the cactus dash, or is that just a cactus dash? I think that's just a cactus dash. The okay. cactus dash is further down south, <laughs> if I remember correctly. What the? Just a single arrow. What? Get out of here. Andy's really haunted by these arrows to see. I it's gotta 
It's gotta be Ice Palace, man. There's just... There's just not enough stuff left. We're running out of things to do. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I think... I don't want to guarantee you, but it feels like we're gonna have the famous hammer in Ice Palace. Unless you were right that it is actually... Well, no, because Swamp is still not even in the logic, because we don't have that... S we don't have the lamp yet, so... Yeah, a Hammer's gotta be in here. It's yeah, either Hammer yeah. to... or Lamp to Swamp to Hammer, you know, something ridiculous like that. Or maybe we'll find a flute in here to get us to the Mire area where we'll find Hammer and Mire. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a popular place. Some weird combination of fetch quests as well, I guess. No powder or... Well, powder doesn't really help, I guess. I don't know, is it in the logic if you can mirror there but don't have the hammer? I think it is, right? For what? For uh, Batman. Of course, yeah. That's part of it. That's that's in it. Yeah, then I guess that could be something. Still haven't found a mushroom. It could be on any of the tablets if you find a book somewhere. So Chris can check three more chests in Ice Palace. He's just going to have to route it a little weird. He can kill the two freeze roads to get two chests here, or one chest here, then the one in the tea room. He does have the ice... Oh, make that four. He does have the ice palace big key, so... Mm-hmm. And there's, you're now going to grab his blue mail? There's the flute! <laughs> we got it! All right. All right. One more piece of the puzzle. Will Hammer be in here, too? There's a big 20. still has two more chests he can grab in here, and then it's going to be back to Kakariko to activate Flute and head on over to the Mire area, which uh, that unlocks the three overworld items. Two in Mire Shed, one in uh, uh, Checkerboard Cave, and then of course, however many items are available to them in Mire. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also finally back in sequence now with that Flute. Yeah, that's true, because that flute would lead them up to Death Mountain to allow them to do Hera and all that stuff, so that actually puts Thieves Town back into the logic as well. And Andy going to be a little behind, but not by too much. And these guys are definitely keeping it very close, even though their routes have diverged quite a bit every now and again. Uh, with how kind of, I, I'm not sure if I want to call it linear, but it's really been kind of pushing them in one direction. Uh, found the lamp. Yay! So lamp and flute. So sequence breaking begun. But we are heading up to Kakariko to go activate that flute and head to the Meyer area. And uh, no Canis Maria, so you can't really much in Meyer. Well, you can't finish it, let's say that. Uh, we mm -hmm. also don't know if we have the correct medallion to get into Mire anyway. But yeah, we'll have to find out. We... Unless we find something in the overworld stuff, the Mire Shed or Chickaboard Cave will probably be seeing a Mire dip by both these players. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they've really cleared out pretty much all their possibilities, except what just opened up again now with a flute. Yeah, that's a, an interesting point. Uh, some of Maiden Chat is that depending on how Chris continues to route this, he might put off Thieves Town for a very long time. If a progression item ends up being in the big chest and he finds the other two like pieces of the puzzle to get that chest, you know, that'd be convenient for him. But uh, yeah, it might be a while before he gets that ice rod. Yeah, they could absolutely come back to hurt him. All right, Meyer Shed, what you got for us? You got some bombs and another bat. To Thieves Town. Oh, like, that's a little bit unfortunate because now he'll actually see that it's a pendant, which might make him not want to go there even more. Yeah. If if he decides to look at it. Yeah, good point. Well, he's gonna go ahead and hop into Desert Palace and full clear this dungeon. They do have the small key and the big key. So they can do everything in here. And plenty of firepower to take out land as quickly as possible. Yeah, really, for these guys, it's, it's take your pick here. Silver arrows, fire rod, even the tempered sword would be good enough. 
There's another pod smoky, so that will actually be our sixth one. But the only fifth one for Chris, since he doesn't have that one that was in Thieves Town. And so far, these boots actually... Oh no, boots led to Mir. Yeah, I was about to say, these boots haven't led to anything, but... I would be telling a lie if I said that. Yeah, that mirror was pretty important. Alright, two more chests coming up for Chris. While well, Andy's going to be going through the hookshot room to check the last item, which uh, we know is the lamp. Which, uh, at this point, lamp's not really... Oh, there it is! <laughs> There's the hammer! Wow! Oh, man. What a convoluted way to get to that hammer. That is crazy. Now, at this point, because of that whole ice rod situation, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for Chris. It really depends on where we find Kana Samaria. Mm hmm Yeah, we can really only hope that uh, he's led back to, to Thieves Town right after this with the hammer now, even though it's a pendant. Yeah. Maybe Land Balls will hold the uh, Thieves Town small key as well. But uh, at this point, you know, going back to Pod, there's still that one extra chest, and then... Helma King. Pod is a crystal. We're still looking for that Eastern Palace big key as well. So we're, we're not... We're not out of trouble yet. So, okay, let's take a moment. We still need... We're still looking for Kane of Samaria. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still looking for Eastern Palace big key. And I did, think... Did, did we not get a medallion check for Meyer from Chris? Maybe we didn't catch it. He went straight into Meyer's Shed and then straight into Desert, so... Hmm, okay, interesting. He might have seen it, but I, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I certainly haven't. But uh, we might still be looking for Bombos, uh, for what we know at least. Someone in chat is saying Bombos, but I'm not sure... if they're just hoping that it's gonna be Bombos. Oh, it's quick. quick. So it is available to him, but without that Cane of Samaria... Not as ideal, but hey, at an hour and six minutes, Chris Owen will be picking up his first crystal. That's uh, oh, it's pretty normal for Keysanity. Yeah, and it's pretty crazy to see that Andy has picked up nothing but pendants so far. <laughs> All right, both of our runners here pretty synced up on the checkerboard cave check. Let's see if we can find anything of worth. The wrong yeah, not cane. the right cane. They're both gonna go ahead and grab it. Uh, I find that interesting, seeing how they already have the cape to get into Spike Cave, but okay. I'll allow. Besides, some people just like the sparkle sparkle of a blue cane. Yeah, I can't blame them. <laughs> it uh, looks like Chris is diving right back into Ice Palace here. Oh, yeah, there is still three more items left in here, including one on the big guy. Yeah, also with that... Oh, this is going to be tough. It's either going to be, you know, a Swamp Palace dive, or Finish Ice Palace, or Finish Pod. Finding the hammer, hammer at this point... Like, you want Hammer to be your go mode item at this point in a race. Mm -hmm. Now... It's like, alright, I have all these things I could do. Because a lot of times the seeds will, like, open up and all of a sudden you have, like, all these crystal dungeons. It's gonna be interesting for Andy, though, because all he has left are crystal dungeons. But, um, the difference between a, a, a go mode swamp and a full clear swamp is pretty huge. A couple minutes. Yeah, it's definitely something that you'd rather go mode than not. Uh, stuff like Turtle Rock, you know, it's not a huge difference if you can go mode it or not, but Swamp, as you say, or Ice Palace even. These are the things that can really save time if you can go mode those. Oh, for sure. Andy with a really nice, clean land wall fight, similar to Chris's, so... Those silver arrows are quite, are quite handy for this boss fight. Yeah, and of course also showing off like both of these guys are in the finals of this tournament. And you're going to be ducking into the first part of Desert. He still has all these items to check. I'm curious to see if we're going to see a uh, Mystery Mire dive at all. There are a lot of 
there are, I mean, there's a good chunk of items in there, and, you know, you never know if you're going to find that Cana Samaria in here. Yeah, that yeah. The Eastern Palace big key, I can see that being a butt <laughs> throughout this run. It's like, oh, great, I found Ice Rod. Oh, wait, I still have to find Eastern Palace big key. <laughs> I, I have to find another Ice Rod. Dang it. Yeah, it's... uh. Key Sanity is really good at adding more ice rods to the game. All right, Chris, now coming up on some more item locations here that are opened up by that hammer, hammer that he just found. See if we can get anything good. A bee. Another B. Already sold one of them into slavery today. And a key to G Tower. G T. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I guess I could have said that and kept the the joke funny. The anti joke <laughs> is also funny. Whatever. I I'm over it. Yeah. At this point, Chris is he's got a little bit of a lead just because he's already taken out these dungeons, but um, it really depends if Andy continues to follow suit. Of course, Chris still has to go back and finish and kill Blind and get that Ice Rod, so... I can easily see that Ice Rod being uh, a real problem for Chris later on. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think what you were saying earlier and just now is spot on. I think what makes or breaks this seed for Chris Sills is going to be that Ice Rod. Mm -hmm. Because when you I have assume... all these Crystal Dungeons that you can do, why the heck would you go into a Pendant Dungeon at this point? Unless exactly. you're, like, wanting to gamble. Like, Pendant Dungeons are generally a good play, like, early on, but later on it gets a little bit like, but what if, what if Ice Rod is just on the way through these Crystal Dungeons? How convenient would that be? Yeah, and with how much he still has left that he's now able to check after getting that hammer, I don't blame him at all. There's a pretty good chance that Ice Rod could be in any of those... I don't know how many there's still left, like 20 plus chests that he can check. Pretty decent fight for Cold Stare, of Cold Stare from, uh, from Chris, taking a little, little Cold Stare kiss, uh, which didn't allow him to keep him in the corner, but uh, finishing him off just fine. And we do have Andy going into Swamp Palace. There are a lot of things in Swamp Palace. There are a lot. A total of 10. And uh, especially if you have to do the left side. It can, it can be a long trek. It can take a little bit of time. Oh, looks like Chris is going to be going back into Palace of Darkness, so he's opting to finish off these half-finished dungeons as opposed to starting a brand new one. Yeah, I kind of like that mindset. Oh, and he do did just get that bit of information about Thieves Town, that it is a pendant, so... Hmm. You know, sometimes having that knowledge can help and or hurt you, depending on <laughs> how you like to route. Yeah. Because all these dungeons have almost equi well, pretty much equivalent value in uh, item fill logic. Yeah, and as we were saying earlier in Key Sanity, it doesn't really matter too much if they're Pendant or Crystal, because, you know, there's stuff in all of them, usually. Uh, it's just, man... Thiefstown was, uh, what's even worse, I find, is that the first four chests that he checked really early on were already so extremely stacked with items that he probably has even less reason to want to go back there. Yeah, that that tends to be a thought process. I know I'm guilty of it, of, you know, this dungeon already gave me so many good items. There's no way it would give, keep giving me good items. That's silly. Why would it do that? And especially when you put a required item right at the end with with the boss. So many times you get a pendant boss, pendant dungeon boss holding the required item. Like, why? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's gonna make, uh, make the rest of this run pretty interesting, because, you know, Chris is on a crystal count basis, he's in the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, and he finds his Cana Samaria in here, and, and, or Eastern Palace Binky, then that's just instant boom. Lead. Lead change. Yeah, absolutely. Just like that. Nice use of sword beam hitting that switch on the way out. I like that. 
The thing I'm seeing right now on Chris's side as well is that he uh, he's left one chest behind. I forgot which one. I think it's the vanilla bikini chest. That's correct. And uh, you know, once he runs out of locations to check for that ice rod, these single chests in all the crystal dungeons will also be on his mind. He may go back in after killing Helma and check that one since it is pretty quick. Yeah, true. All right, Helma, let's see what you're holding on to. 17 hits with a hammer and then either silver arrow to the face. Oh, and there's another. Oh, I forgot. We're still missing some turtle rock small keys. So that's that left side T rock small key is actually really important. Oh, and there's Bombos, so. That's all of our medallions and all of our Turtle Rock small keys for Andy, at least. Yeah, so now Andy is just a Cane of Samaria and an Eastern Palace big key away from Go Mode. And just some bombs from Helma, so. These uh, little cleanups are uh, not paying off too much for Chris. He is grabbing, like, even further of a crystal lead, but... If he ends yeah. up going back in and checking that second chest, or that last chest, you know, while, let's say, Andy comes back and cleans up, but skips the two chests on the right and Ice Palace and whatnot. Mm hmm Yeah, it's really... I, I fear I'm repeating myself a little bit, but... It's just these crystals are a little bit of a consolation prize, almost, with the location of that Ice Rod. It's nice that you can get them out of the way and have them, because you need seven of them to finish the game. But it's not really helping them much right now. Alright, what do we got in the back of Swamp? It is the Cane of Samaria! Oh. There it is! Oh, wow. Alright, so all we need is a big key. Eastern Palace big key. It fits in Swamp Palace. Andy could be leaving this dungeon in go mode. Just a compass. The journey continues. But man, that is huge. I could easily see Eastern Palace big key being like in the back of T-Rock at this point. Oh yeah, absolutely. We still got all of Meyer left as well, so there's plenty of spots left. Yeah, good call for Andy not uh, diving into Meyer early without the cane. Man, I had Cana Samaria in that exact chest in my race, or, yeah, my race yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and he's got the nice little... I got it a little bit. I was gonna keep going for it. I love the old Argus quick kill. It's yeah, really, I think it's great. It's really hard to do. I, I don't know. You, you don't know? I, I just feel like I'm getting my fingers in a knot when I try this. Nice Argus kill from him. And there's a oh. big key! Oh, to oh man! Oh man. Alright, wow, the Crystal right. is heading into Swamp as well. Oh man. Chris not going to be far behind, but that ice rod is going to bite him in the butt later on. But at this point, Andy has taken a tremendous lead. He's going to be able to go back into Pod and Ice Palace and uh, clean up those dungeons without having to check anything extra, as well as going into Mire and T-Rock. And we get we get the actual, the go mode -est go mode of T-Rocks, where you just go straight to Trinex. Like, I... One of the one of the highlights of Key Sandy is being able just to skip literally everything in that dungeon. But, yeah, um, and especially with Meyer as well. But man, that Swamp Palace being the biggest play of this run, and uh, you know, a lot of people like to put off Swamp because of how long it takes. <clears throat> it is a very long dungeon, but it ended up being the right one. Yeah, it's oftentimes worth it. Yeah, at this point, it's it would be hard to say that we're not getting a game three. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty tough. Yeah, I think uh, you know all signs point towards game three at this point. I mean, unless Chris, well, he still needs to get that T Rock. Well, I guess he doesn't necessarily need to get that T Rock small key on the left side, so he could go straight to Argus and skip left side and get those two items. But he's still looking for Ice Rod, so of course he would go back in and check left side swamp and here's yeah. the problem he's gonna get kane of samaria he's probably not gonna be going into thieves town next he's probably gonna go into mire yeah if you have the option of uh 
clearing out the rest of a pendant dungeon that's already given you four great items or full clearing uh, a crystal dungeon that you need to finish. I think it's pretty clear what you're going to do, usually. Yeah. Nice hover. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> I don't know. Save and quit out. Just finish the hover and then save and quit out? Yeah. Uh... Chris? Um... I'm gonna have... My, what? Just... Why did... What? Um... Un oh, he drowned the key. Oh, boy. He didn't... No, he couldn't have. He didn't even unlock that door. Well, okay, and then Chad is lying to me. I'm not sure what the deal is then. Is he just going into Thieves Town randomly? What? I'm insanely confused about everything right now. I I would be very surprised if Chris drowned the queue. That's why I don't believe Chad. Chad's yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't dude. think... The key door was still locked. How are you trying to key if you can't even get to that area? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I don't know. He unlocked it and didn't go get the key. I'm, I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a clip. Mm-hmm. Someone do us the favor and clip that. Nah, chat's, chat's still lying. I don't, I don't, <laughs> even if they're right, they're wrong. I don't care. Chat's making stuff up. This is, I mean, the, if he did drown the key, even though chat's lying, um, you know that's a that's a good mistake to make, but this is I have no explanation for this play. I have no idea why what drove him to go to Thieves Town at this point. Yeah, you know, we're definitely gonna have to ask him afterwards. I mean, Chris is really well knowledge of how key logic works, especially being a developer of the randomizer. So maybe he has some more information that we do not. Oh, look, a clip from that thing I was talking about. I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> Why would I watch that? That's I'm commentating a race. Come on, chat. Jeez. Drives me mad. <laughs> but, uh... And cleaning up Ice Palace can be heading into Pod to finish out that dungeon. And unfortunately for him, he's going to be able to skip that chest in the back. <laughs> uh, well, this is interesting. Um, he still has to go back to Swamp Palace, so he is going to get his ice rod soon. But uh, you know, he missed the crucial parts about Ice Palace. Yeah, it's uh, like it's... the crystal and the Cade of Samaria and the Eastern Palace of Inky. I hope he immediately goes back to Swamp after this because, I mean, this somehow I uh, magically have a, kind he, of... He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have anything else he can do, I think. Yeah, true. But, I mean, this somehow magically work for him in his favor, kind of, but this is still some sort of craziness. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to have him. I'm excited for this interview. I want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris, you bad man. How did you know? It's I a hope. Play. I mean, yeah, it's really. Gonna work out for him. It's going to help him catch up a little bit, but he is still pretty far behind. But the nice thing is now he'll be able to go mode Swamp Palace. Yeah. Unless well, he yeah. found the key, which everyone's claiming he did. Um, I wonder if he will check the pedestal at this point, though. Yeah, I was just going to say, I hope he doesn't blindfold, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, Chris went into that fight knowing that it was... Uh... Oh, and this looks like oh, the Mire no. play. Is he going uh, into the Mire? Oh. Yeah, it looks like it. That feeling when you're so close. So close to, but here's the thing: like, 
had he, I, I still have a feeling that had he finished Swamp, he would have gotten Makina Samaria and Eastern Palace of Key. He might have gone back to finish Eastern. He might have gone into to do Meyer then. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this uh, this is gonna hurt him. It's gonna put him even further behind. Yeah, this is very unfortunate for him, but he probably feels behind right now, and you know, it's just doing what he thinks might give him the biggest chance of actually still pulling it out. He's probably well aware that if Kano Samaria isn't in here, he's not in a very great position. I mean, he might be feeling behind because of going into ice and going into pod and not finding anything, but mm -hmm. at the same time, he doesn't know since he didn't finish Swamp, so he doesn't know that the items he's looking for are in there. So this might be just one of those crazy plays, hoping that it pays off. Unfortunately, it's not going to. Just a big 20 in the big chest. Yeah, I'm not even sure what he could even be finding in here anymore. Maybe a book? Oh, and Annie unfortunately doesn't get the quick style folks with me here. Not gonna make much of a difference, but it's uh, it's an unusual sight from high-level players like these two. Dude, he's just so hype about finding go mode in stupid Swamp Palace that he's just he's just going. He's gone. Like, <laughs> I, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all he has true. left to do is uh, take out the boss here, get the crystal, and then he's got to flute over go mode Meyer, which go mode Meyer is pretty nice. We might even. You think he'll I mean, hover the bridge? If he doesn't hover the bridge, I'm gonna be mad at him. I don't. Why would he? He doesn't even have. Well, is it is that the fastest way to get back there, even with the big key in hand already? I want to say yes, but I haven't like you know confirmed that. My oh, my, stats, sure. my my stats analysis team has not looked into that precisely. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, knowing Andy, though, you know, any opportunity to hover, he's going to do it. It's kind of his shtick. It's kind of his thing. Yeah, I mean, if... You know, for, if for, the, for the fans and all. Yeah, if, no, if for nothing else, then at least for the fans. Grabs a nice half magic here from uh, Armos Knight. It's not something he needs, but, you know, it's always nice to have. Yeah, Chris, we're kind of running out of options in Meyer. But yeah, right now all he has left to do, all he has, the only options he has left is Meyer and Swamp. Yeah, he's gonna be back to Swamp after this. I mean, there's nothing else that he can possibly go to. Oh, there's another big key to Skullwood. Oh, that's one more thing he might go do instead. Oh boy. At least it's close to Thieves Town, so he might want to finish up Thieves Town before. Oh, what's he doing? Is he thinking about Thompson? Chris, what are you doing? Uh, he's, uh, he's thinking very hard about where to go next. You know, I have to say, now that I watch this for, you know, half a minute or a minute, that little fireball shooter is really bad. And uh, it seems that Chris is going to have to withdraw from the race. Uh, it appears uh, something IRL came up, and of course, IRL comes first. Uh, fortunately, he's not going to be able to finish the run. And uh, that's uh, that's, that's going to be game. That's going to be setting up game three for us guys. <laughs> Kind of an interesting turn of events, but you know, sometimes IRL, sometimes real life happens, and uh, it's of course far more important than a video game on the internet. But uh, GG's, of course, too, Chris, for put on a great run. Uh, fortunately, we will not, we also won't, won't be able to get that sweet interview from him about earlier, but that might have some explanation of what uh, yeah. happened. Uh, Absolutely. I'd say, since uh, his his ability, his uh, since things were a little, I don't know, things were a little weird. Yeah, it's uh, it's very unfortunate, but uh, let's all give our thoughts and to to Chris and hope it's nothing too awful. 
Chat, I'm gonna need you to do something for me. I'm gonna need you to send some energy. Send some energy to Chris. We don't know yes, what's please. going on. It's also, you know, none of our business, so send energy his way. You guys get a game three, so it's a win for you guys. Uh, fortunate that we're not gonna get that close race that we always wanna see um, in a tourney race, especially in the finals, but, uh, you know, we care about everyone in our community, so of course. We do not blame anyone for having to drop out of a race to deal with stuff in real life. So hopefully it's nothing too bad. Sending positive energy, sending lots of tea. Absolutely. Think of him, keep him in your thoughts. Uh, we're sure everything is going to be fine. But uh, as Willard said, real life always comes before anything else. So we totally understand. And uh, we all win a game number three out of that. So it's not all bad, right? It's not all bad. It's a good more key sanity. It's not over, guys. But of course, uh, being as this is still attorney race and players have to finish, and he still has to go ahead and knock out the rest of this game. Of course, he does not have that much left to do since he can completely go mo turtle rock. Uh, of course, if he deals with some more dead rocks like that, it might lengthen the game a little bit longer. But, yep, of um, course, immediately gets trolled by death dead rogs as soon as you say he doesn't have too much left to do. He's going to be able to go mode T-Rock and G-Tower, so it's uh, basically it's all execution on here, here on out. Yep. And going into T-Rock, Silver Arrows, Blue Mail, Temperate Sword. He's only at 11 hearts, but uh, that Blue Mail will mitigate some of the damage. And of course, like, he, he could, doesn't even have to, he could just go right around the Chain Chomps. Like, can you imagine a T-Rock where you don't have to deal with the Chain Chomps, like, at all? Oh, so good. It's such a good feeling. Gosh. I want that. Maybe I should play Key Sanity more, but that would that never happen. <laughs> If I yeah. play Key Sanity, I would get a hammer and swamp, for sure. The thing with Key Sanity is that even if you get, you know, the every now and again you get a seed where you can just walk past the Chain Chomps, it just torches you enough every other time. I, I'm not sure it balances that out. T-Rock is a great dungeon. <laughs> Very well designed. Mm-hmm. I mean, Blue Mail, I mean, the Chain Shops still do, what, three hearts with Blue Mail? Isn't it even more? I'm not sure. It's four hearts with green, so I'm assuming it'd be three with blue. And two yeah, with makes sense. It's still a pretty heavy hitter. They're definitely no fun. But as we see, Andy just dashes past them, no problem. Yeah, he has all the keys. He doesn't even have to, like, get the pokey key, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so either. Doesn't really need it. He no. has everything. Yeah, he's good to go. The true Gomo T-Rock. Can't get through here any faster than this. Uh, to be 100% precise, Chris... Uh did not actually he didn't forfeit he's gonna he said he wants to come back and finish this race uh later uh, but uh so we could assume that it's nothing too bad hopefully. but uh yeah he just uh couldn't finish it right now now we get to watch andy do a let's play <laughs> can we just get him on the mic andy talk us through uh talk us through your uh your movements you know how long, that, how, long, how long have you been playing this game? That would actually be pretty fun. <laughs> uh, I'm sad. We're not going to get to see four perfect laser skips. Yeah. It's a little my bit favorite. Sad my favorite part of randomizer okay. <laughs> as long as we get that sweet back door try next fight if i don't get mm. that i'm gonna be i'm gonna be livid livid All right. i well. say
Oh, looking good. Oh, baby. Oh, you even got the nice little dash and the hit against uh, the wall. Ah, oh, one missed sword slash, but that's fine. Uh, I can see past that. I could ignore that. Yeah, still a very beautiful fight here. Let's see if he gets a double hit on the little snake there. And he... All right, it looks like we're heading over to G Tower, finally. It's such a good feeling being able to enter and then just go straight up. Just ignore everything else. Don't need anything. I mean, we even found like three GT small keys along the way, so. Yeah, they have to absolutely not go even the slightest bit out of their way. Or Andy doesn't have to, I should say. Let's see how let's see how good his uh, his gauntlet is today. I'm sure everyone is looking forward to that Moldorm two hover. The greatest one of all. <laughs> oh, man, the excitement in your voice it's almost so can't good. bear it. Oh, I love the hover. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny every time. It makes me giggle. So I go to good. bed. I go to bed, and I think about, oh man, I can't wait to watch another hover. <laughs> you dream of hovering. It's uh, it's a magical thing, guys. If you can't hover, I mean, get get on it. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Learn to hover. Oh man, that was a beautiful dash through that cannonball room. That was quite nice. And you often to keep his silver arrows out. They do cause a lot of lag in these rooms, especially with all the enemies, but... Uh, depending on how often you use it, it probably... The difference between switching to the regular arrows to get through these rooms is probably insignificant. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the nice little dash between the Beemos and the Spikes, but all the enemies moving out of the way oh so inconveniently. Yeah, not having too much luck in that room, but this one looks a lot better. Alright, we got a really good quick kill on Lamolas. Let's see if we can get that quick kill on Lamolas too. Decides to go for the fire rod this time instead of the silver arrows. Yeah, sometimes Works. that pesky Medusa head or whatever you want to call it, the little fireball dude. Uh, is really good. Nice bonk there. Is uh, really good at uh, sniping you right as you're trying to set up that silver arrow spot. Mm hmm Yeah, pretty uh, pretty straightforward, pretty textbook. Still really enjoy being able to use the Kana Samari in this room. It's always weird when you get a randomizer seat that isn't Kana Samari required, and then you get into those rooms, you're like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Yeah, even though I still can't do these rooms correctly because I'm really bad, I still feel so lost when I don't have the cane in there. Yeah. A lot of people will switch and use the arrows to take them out, which uh, works. Probably the best option out of all the others. Yeah, probably. Plenty of time to get upstairs without getting that. Imagine getting a G tower despawn at this point. That'd oh, be that terrible. Be, that'd be very annoying. Yeah. We don't want to watch Andy do Gauntlet twice. That's uh, once is enough. Yeah, I mean, come on. We've seen enough of this guy. Huh? He's gonna be a bit short on hearts going into this Ga this Agatu and Ganon fight. Of course, you know. Tempered and silver arrows, and wow, how did he do that? It's like he, he just teleported across the stage. What a what a legend! I've never seen that before. I don't wow. know what that was. Wow, I'm gonna write about this in my live journal. That was so exciting. 
<laughs> I will post about this on my MySpace. Oh my god, guys, clip that. Clip that. Sorry. <laughs> Taking it too far. Okay. Uh, not a very friendly Agatou pattern there. You never want to see those four, <laughs> all of them in the corner spread out, but... Oh, and then hitting them into the wall so it despawns that third one. But, uh... Getting the blue ball. Man, he's not getting good. He's not getting it at all. No, not having much luck here, but making the best of what he has. Gets him down. But, uh... Oh! <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. Why not? I love that one. That one's that one's great. I, you know, not even gonna go into how to do that. Uh, nope. Just gonna pretend like that's normal. Normal Andy stuff, you know. Yeah, what do you mean? Doesn't does is that not what happens after your Agatha fight? I mean, that's just the bird animation taking me away. Yeah, exactly. Easy <laughs> every time. Right, utilizing some dash strats, and then probably some. S nope, just gonna stick to dash strats. That's really hard to do consistently. Yeah, it looks so nice and easy, but when you actually try it, you just face plant in the game and then die horribly. Yeah, really good first two phases of Ganon. I just gotta wait for all these dang warps to finish. Ganon, stop. Ganon. Thank you. <laughs> That's enough. He's like, I can't. I can't make this finish yet. I'll have to be here a little more. Oh, nice setup. He should be able to get triple out of that. Oh, beautiful. One more to go, and Andy will be taking this game too in the finals match of the Link to the Basque Sandy Tournament Championship. That means, friends, that we will be getting a game three. I believe it is slated for tomorrow. Uh, do you have the exact time? 1 p.m., I believe. Oh, baby. GG's to Andy, finishing the fight. Uh, the time of 1, now, 41.59. Yep, GG's. Chit chat about the seed at all. Uh, fortunate that the circumstances happen, but, um, you know, that's random for you. You never know what can happen. Yeah, yeah as we were saying. Uh, you guys oh. enjoyed that race. It was a good one. I, I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, unfortunate, as we were saying, but, um, real life always comes first. And uh, just to remind everyone again, Christos has not forfeit the race. He absolutely plans on finishing it later. He does not want a forfeit or a DQ. And uh, he's absolutely free to do that. Uh, he'll have a pretty amazing time on that race in the end, but that's not going to matter. It's not going to be a forfeit. And we do have Andy join us with the, right now, GG Andy, setting up a game three. How are you feeling about that seat overall? Uh, I felt pretty good. I played it all really well. I think, um, I don't know where Chris was or anything, so. Yeah, he, um, your dip back into Thief's Town is kind of what we thought sealed the fate, because uh, Chris never went back and he found the hammer and that led him to all different sorts of places but never back into thieves town he was in swamp shortly after you were there but he accidentally flooded the key and uh, just saved and quit and went back into thieves town oh and after that he finished up pod i believe and yeah oh, sorry go ahead when he got the hammer, like he went back and finished ice, then he finished pod, um, which uh, ended up holding nothing for him. So I'm sure he was feeling a little bit behind there. And then uh, after the after Thieves Town is when he went into Meyer, and then had to go. 
but uh, yeah, what until we found that cane of Samaria, we couldn't, we had no idea what like what was going to end up playing out. And then not only you find the cane of Samaria in Swamp, but then the, the Eastern Palace big key and essentially go mode from Argus uh, was pretty much uh, GG at that point. Oh, well, dang. But yeah, overall, I think I played it pretty well. 141 for an all dungeons key sanity is pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that sweet 10 arrows at the pedestal was uh, <laughs> totally worth it. I was like, man, if Thieves Town is the last pendant for me, it's not in logic yet, but <laughs> it could still be something, right? No. Right. No, never. Well, no, GG's, of course it wasn't. I'm sure you're excited to set up a game three. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to make for an exciting finish. Uh, good way to, you know, game threes are always exciting for uh, for both players. You know, we want to see it come down to, hopefully we can get another seven second finish for that next one. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, GG's. Any other uh, comments about the seed or just about Key Sanity or anything, in, anything else from you, Andy? Uh... I just hope that we don't get another seed like yesterday. <laughs> I made I made I made sure that something like that didn't happen by deciding not to go to Village of Outcast early and walking all the way up to Death Mountain with the hook shot and moon pearl and Titan's Mitts. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's what blew me over yesterday. What was up with that that the first four chests at Thief Sound were incredible? Yeah, that was sad. nuts. Bow, fire rod, uh something and a sword. <laughs> I don't remember what the yeah. thing was. I mean, we were thinking that, you know, Chris pulled pulled ahead with the, or he went straight to Village of Outcast, but then as soon as he finished Hype Cave and all that stuff, he went straight up to Death Mountain, so you guys kind of swapped places for a bit. So for the most part, it was pretty evened up until, uh, I, I'd say until the, uh, of course, the, the Mire, or not the Mire, the Cane of Samaria grabbing that and then all of a sudden you had, you were able to just finish ice finish pod without having to touch anything else the beautiful go mode mire and the greatest go mode t rock you could possibly Dude, get go mode tr is like the weirdest feeling thing because <laughs> it's just you don't do anything <laughs> so you, you, kill one pokey. <laughs> you kill one pokey for the key and that's it that's pretty much it yeah uh it's just weird but it was also great with that g tower big key in the first chest of the game that was awesome oh yeah yeah that was a uh, that was something else we got like three big keys in the first four locations that i checked mm -hmm. and i was like well this is this is interesting it's kind of like <laughs> yesterday where we got like seven big keys leaving kakariko <laughs> that sounds about right but i was All bummed right. that left side swamp was nothing Hey, it you was, got it was a it was a turtle rock key and bomb. Yeah, books. but at but. that point we were kind of anticipating the Eastern Palace big key was going to be like deep in T Rock or something. So we were kind of surprised to see that on Argus. Yeah, was... when um when I got Kane, I was like, all right, so Eastern big key can be pretty much anywhere. Uh, do I go finish up Ice and and Pod? Or do I go to Meyer? Do I just say screw it and go to Turtle Rock? And then it was just there, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it really. <laughs> all of my plans. It, it really couldn't have come at a better time. All right, well, GG's again. Congratulations on setting up a game three. I'm sure everyone here is excited to see it come down to the wire that final match, which is, of course, scheduled for tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, as for now, there are tons of Link to the Past going on. We have the NMG tournament. There's a race over on Speed Gaming 2 right now, as well as another one starting up on this channel at the top of the hour. So you got a little bit of time. So I'd, I'd say head on over to SG2, watch some Link to the Past energy, see where the roots, where we all started from before Randomizer really was a thing. And uh, you'll, you, you might learn a few things. But uh, thank you again, guys, for our, everyone for watching, of course, to our runners for putting on a great show. And uh, for my good friend, Herfy Durfy, for joining me on commentary. Yeah, of course, for me also, GG Andy, and uh, good luck tomorrow on your game three, making it as exciting as possible. 
Also, I want to give a quick shout out to our tracker, the new dude who kept track of all the items and crystals and pendants and keys and big keys and everything else that you can find in this game beautifully as always. And I uh, hope you guys had fun. Tune in again tomorrow for game number three and uh, keep watching all of Speed Gaming. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah, dudes. Good stuff. Y'all take it easy. Have a good one.